If our election took place in Bolivia, the 2020 presidential election took place in Bolivia, I can promise you the State Department would report back and say that was not a free and fair election. And Wikipedia would report it was a clouded election because there was fraud and interference, which there was. If some oligarch, some tech oligarch, spent nearly half a billion dollars to control the mechanics of the Bolivian election in 2020, we would say it's not a legitimate election. But when Mark Zuckerberg does it in the United States, oh, it's, he's just helping with COVID. To where I would know something to be truth, and I'd be like, I still hope it's not true. sincere what's true the true things are the things that you can't say i cannot remember the last time someone in public life was prosecuted or even criticized for lying if lying was a crime i mean your governor would be in supermax for life don't you talk about my governor like that <laughs> If being incompetent was a felony, she'd be on death row. Banning paint sales during COVID? It's unbelievable. But there's no penalty for lying and there's no penalty for incompetence. So what do we penalize? Every society penalizes something. There's a death penalty offense in every society from the beginning of time. What's ours? It's telling the truth. If you tell the truth, the real truth, the no BS truth, like what's actually going on here? Wait, he said banning paint? Why would somebody ban paint? What if you want to ren renovate your house or something? Is this actually working? And no, it's not. Why isn't it working? If you were to be honest about that, you're done. So you have to ask yourself, like, what does it say about a society where the only penalty is for noting what's true? Tucker Carlson is absolutely unstoppable, and he just dropped some truth bombs that are going to inspire you like never before. Hey, gang, it's me, Dr. Steve, your patron professor, here to help you to think better so you can feel better in these crazy and turbulent times. If you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that bell and subscribe button. Also, if you would be so kind, please share this video with friends and family. We're once again being suppressed by big tech, so I need your help to get the hopeful message of this channel out to as many people as possible. Tucker Carlson is one- And I know in the video I said big tech doesn't suppress, but it definitely does. It suppressed my channel too. <laughs> it did, it really did. Like I've never experienced what I'm experiencing now, but it's lit. Anyways, hey y'all, make sure y'all subscribe to the channel. Don't forget to subscribe. Once again, lighting up the internet, he recently appeared in Utica, Michigan, speaking before gathering of the Brighter Michigan Political Action Committee, and the truth bombs he dropped were astonishing. In fact, that was precisely the theme of the talk. Truth is now our primary weapon in a system that operates totally and completely by lies. And I'll stop with this. I think the only answer is to tell the truth calmly and slowly and fearlessly. Everybody knows what it is. They'll come at you. First, they'll tell you you're hurting someone's feelings. You're mean. That's always the first. Then they're trying to appeal to your basic decency and then subvert it. No one wants to be mean. They did this during COVID. Well, you should take the shot. Well, what's in the shot? Shut up and take it. But I don't need the shot. I already had COVID. You know, I'm 26. I just ran a Iron Man. Shut up and take the shot. Well, what if I don't want to? You're killing your grandparents. Okay. And that, okay, so that's the first thing they do. They accuse you of being mean. Then the second thing they do is they call you insane. You're a conspiracy theorist. Really? If I were the sort of person who gloated, I would keep a list of all the times I personally have been called a conspiracy theorist or a wacko and then compare them to the outcome five years later. <laughs> This is why you can't really listen to like the opinions of the masses just because they're the masses, bro. Because sometimes you may be right. This is why I tell people, or at least I try to tell myself that, you know, always try to go out and search for information because you never really know 
was right or wrong until it happens. Like, you just got to form your best opinions. You may be wrong sometimes. You may be right. But, you know, just try. They all turned out to be true. And I... I tried to be a decent Protestant and not brag about myself, but like, <laughs> the list is long, <laughs> very long. And then the third thing they do is just criminalize telling the truth. And you're seeing that now. There, there are people who are going to jail for non-trivial lengths. By the way, anyone who's ever been to a jail knows, and there are a bunch of sheriffs here, and they know best of all, any time in jail is not trivial. Any time behind bars. A drunk driving offense for a night can change your life. You don't want to go to jail, period. Yeah. It's not a joke. And anyone who tells you, oh, he's going to Club Fed where they have volleyball, right? Taking away a person's freedom and locking him in a cage where he can't see the stars at night is short of killing him, maybe more than killing him. The gravest thing you can do to another human being. So no one should ever minimize the penalty of prison time or jail time. It's profound. It'll destroy you and your family. And they're sending people to prison for saying that the last election was rigged, which it was. All right, so there's a lot. I need to edit out that word, that R word, because I don't think I can say that on YouTube. So yeah, I'm gonna edit out that R word because the R-I-G-G-E-D, can't say that. <laughs> it is crazy that I'm saying this now because you really can't say it. Like, you really can't say it. A lot there that I think is absolutely spot on that we can unpack. What's happening here, what Tucker Carlson is calling attention to, is actually something akin to what Soviet scholars called hypernormalization. All right, it's a fancy term derived from studies of Russian citizens' dispositions and inclinations towards the end of the Soviet experiment. So what scholars found was that by the 70s and 80s, as the Soviet Union was beginning to wane, the vast majority of Russians knew that their system was totally corrupt and intellectually bankrupt. They knew it. They knew they were being lied to by their leaders and, and they knew that their leaders knew that they were lying. But, and this is absolutely key, but even though everyone knew everyone was lying, the public nevertheless pretended to accept those lies. That's weird. In other words, the lies basically became the social capital of society to such an extent that citizens had no other possible conception of society other than the lies. Bro, that is facts, bro. Like, I'll be listening to something, and I'll be like, it's no way you actually think this is true. Like, I was listening to a... I don't even want to bring this up because it might get me blocked on this channel. <laughs> All I'm going to say is, bro, I would listen to videos and I would be like, it's no way. It is literally no way you think this is true. I was watching, it was, it was a video and it was this millionaire black girl. She was rich, like really, really rich. And she was like, yeah. Um, and it was, she was talking to this other, um, a poorer white student, a white girl. And she's like, yeah, you still have white privilege. And then the girl who was talking to the millionaire black girl was like, yeah, I still have it. I haven't experienced it yet, but I still have it. Like, bro, it is no way, it is literally no way that you're actually saying this right now. Like, it's, it's no way. That's kind of what he's talking about, bro. They knew everything was a lie, but they continued to accept the system because their cognized conception of reality could conceive of no other possible reality other than a system of lies. They remained in the system precisely because they found it impossible to imagine an alternative system. It's like a failed marriage that nevertheless persists because the couple has no idea how to end it. This is what scholars call hypernormalization. It's a fraud that has in effect been normalized. Everyone knows that the powers that be are a corrupt fraud, but they put up with it anyway because they simply can't imagine an alternative. And it is precisely that kind of society that Tucker is calling all of us to resist. And we resist it by courageously speaking the truth. Again, what we have to get here is that all of these lies and intimidation tactics seek to do is deliberately fabricate a society where people comply precisely because they've lost any sense of an alternative to that compliance. I'll say that again. These cultural Marxists, like the Soviet Marxists of old, these woke Marxists, are deliberately attempting to fabricate a society 
where people comply precisely because they've lost any sense of an alternative to that compliance. The purveyors of wokeness and their twisted morality demand a hypernormative world where wokeness is the only alternative. There's no basis for legitimate dissent. And so what Tucker is saying here is that the ultimate expression dissent today in a world built on lies is courageously speaking the truth. One political party and when its largest intelligence gathering agency, the CIA, does the same, it's a little bit like what's happening in Michigan. When federal employees paid for by the tax dollars of everyone take an aggressive position on the side of one political party, you can't have a fair election because you're using public money to put your thumb on the scale on behalf of a partisan cause. It is totally immoral. And it's not free and fair. If our election took place in Bolivia, the 2020 presidential election took place in Bolivia, I can promise you the State Department would report back and say that was not a free and fair election. And Wikipedia would report it was a clouded election because there was fraud and interference, which there was. If some oligarch, some tech oligarch, spent nearly half a billion dollars to control the mechanics of the Bolivian election in 2020, we would say it's not a legitimate election. But when Mark Zuckerberg does it in the United States, oh, it's, he's just helping with COVID. <laughs> Bro, I really hope. I have a lot of faith. That's my thing. I think I have a delusional faith. So where I would know something to be on the brink of truth and I'd be like, I still hope it's not true. Ah, brother. Yeah, he's re you're really afraid of COVID, I'm sure. Yeah. So for saying that out loud, people are going to prison. And of course, the whole point is to convince you not to say it out loud. So don't let them. That's the only point. Don't let them. And if you keep telling the truth, some of you probably get indicted by Dana Nessel. <laughs> Woo -woo. Well, you're going to women's prison a little better, but still, still prison. But it's worth it. Anyway, don't be intimidated. Your children's future depends on your bravery. The great Soviet dissident Alexander Solzhenitsyn once said, the simple step of a courageous individual is not to take part in the lie. One word of truth outweighs the world. One word of truth outweighs the world. Simply put, speaking the truth is our greatest weapon. In a world built on lies, speaking the truth is the single most devastating weapon to bring down such a world. And so Tucker is actually drawing from a very time-tested principle here. Truth is what ultimately brought down the Berlin Wall, the Soviet Union. Truth in the hands of the likes of Alexander Solzhenitsyn and the Czechoslovakian dissidents Václav Havel and Václav Benda and their efforts at building a parallel economy in the 1970s and 80s in the midst of the Soviet-dominated Eastern Europe. All of this is what ultimately brought down a Soviet system built on lies. This is what Tucker's calling all of us to commit ourselves to. Gotta tell the truth, man. Gotta tell the truth. <laughs> If you have any suggestions, comment down below. So if I do, then I'll see you.